Hello and welcome to this short series of tutorials on using inverse kinematics for character animation with inside Adobe After Effects. Now to do this we're going to use a free script which we're going to download from a website which is created by the genius that is Nicolas Dufresne also known as Duduf and we're going to use that script, we're going to install the script and we're actually going to use it inside Adobe After Effects we're going to start off by downloading and installing the script so you know how to do that and then we're going to create a character we're going to set it up and talk about the standard way of animating which is called forward kinematics which is the standard way of doing it inside After Effects and then we'll move on to look at what inverse kinematics is and how to set everything up so that we can have a character that does superb animation is very easy to animate very complex animations inside After Effects so the first thing we need to do is actually get this script which does an awful lot more incidentally than just inverse kinematics so the website you're going to need to go to is this one doodoof.net this is the English site there is actually a French site as well so it's in English and French and if I just play this little um, introduction video here you'll see the sort of thing that we're going to end up with if I just push play you can see that's a very good walk cycle done with some very basic layers now we're going to do something similar just to show you how it operates. Now there is an awful lot of information on this site. It's actually under the After Effects Duduf IK tools and you can actually download and get all the bits and pieces that you want there including some additional tutorials and what have you. My tutorial is going to go quite slowly so that you can follow everything step by step. If you want to go for a slightly quicker tutorial then you'll find that some of the tutorials here will go a lot quicker but you may not be able to follow. So what I'm going to do is now go to the download section which I've got here and you'll see at the top it says click here to download the latest version of Dweet. Click. It downloads and then you need to unzip it. So I'm going to open it up. You need to unzip all these. You don't really need the text files but we're just going to unzip all of those and then we're going to open those up and we're going to move them to where they need to go. Now if you actually go to the help section you'll see it says how do I install C help section so here's the help section you can see it tells you where things are supposed to go so I'm just going to show you on a Windows machine how to actually set this up so I'm going to open up another version of my computer and I'm going to navigate to where I know my After Effects files are so it's under my C drive program files Adobe and then Adobe After Effects CS6 and then support files if I just open that up you can actually see the route that we've got here so you can see it's C drive, program files, Adobe, Adobe After Effects, CS6, support files and then I'm actually going to click into this one that says scripts now on a Mac you can see that it actually says here it's applications Adobe After Effects scripts and then you'll have the same contents that you have here and what we need to do is make sure that we have the bits and pieces in here put in the appropriate place now in the root file, the script file, what you actually need is this one here that says Duic Icons. So we can drop that in and then we can continue and put that in there. And then under the one that says Script UI Panels, we can double click to open that and also double click to open this one here and you'll see that you've got one item here, Duic.jsx. Drop that inside the Script UI Panels, continue. Once that's actually physically in there, what we now need to do is restart Adobe After Effects. Now while After Effects restarting I think it's worth saying that Duik is free software released under the GNU General Public License. However if you actually go to the donate section you'll see that it says if in your opinion Duif tools deserve to be paid for you can buy them for the price of your choice for the price you think is fair. Donations are mainly used to cover the expenses of maintaining this website and distributing the tools freely. Now I think if you're going to use this script it's definitely worth making a donation. Please bear in mind it is there. If you're going to use this a lot and I suspect that most of us will once we get a handle of it I would make a fairly good donation. But the choice is completely yours. So if I now open up After Effects and I go to my Windows panel and click there and go to the very bottom you'll see that we've got something called duik.jsx click on that and a little panel will open and this panel has got all the information that we need to create inverse kinematics incidentally I'm not going to go through them please note 
it's got lots of other really nice options for instance it's got animation options so you can make wheels actually rotate you can do exposure changes wiggles lots of bits and pieces to play with we're not actually going to be playing with those but do have a look through this panel there's an awful lot more that it does and the next thing I need to do is place it into my user interface which will make things a lot better so I'm going to click the little dotted area I'm going to take it over here to where it says info panel and I'm actually going to drop it in the middle there and just resize it so I can see the tools that I need now we're not going to use all of these this is just a basic introduction but I think once you get an idea of how this works you're going to want to use this all the time now I'm going to create a basic man and I'm going to do it with shape layers just to quickly show you what to do so I'm going to go to rounded ellipse tool I'm going to turn the stroke off for these particular bits so I'm just going to create a small head and then on the same shape layer I'm going to create the neck so I'm just going to go to rounded rectangle tool and just create a little neck there so that's a head and neck and then I'm going to select that layer and rename it head and then shut it down and deselect it because I want the next thing to be a completely separate layer this is going to be the body so with nothing selected and with the rounded rectangle tool I'm just going to click and drag to create a body so we'll say that that's the body for the man then I'm going to select that and name that body and then again with nothing selected but this time I'm just going to turn the stroke back on again so that we can clearly define the arms I'm going to do the upper arm which I'm going to want from about there that'll do so I'm going to call that upper arm and I'm going to call it right R it's important that every layer has got its own independent name incidentally so it's quite important to make sure you give them good names then I'm going to click away make sure nothing is selected and I'm going to click to create the forearm hold the spacebar if you need to move it slightly afterwards we'll go with that that should be just about fine and I'm going to call that forearm right because we will do lefts eventually click away and then I'm going to take my ellipse tool and with nothing selected again create hand which is just going to be an ellipse at this point there we go and I'm going to rename that hand right as I say having individual names for these layers is important every name's got to be different now I've created the basics of a man we're going to do one kinematic link we're going to do one link with this particular one but to do standard animation in After Effects and you still need to set this up by the way to use inverse kinematics you need to link everything together so we need to go down here and make sure we've got the parent column showing if you haven't got the parent column showing then you can right click go to columns and just make sure that parent is actually up and showing and then we need to think about how we want to link everything together at the moment I'm going to make the the body the, the, the root if you like and I'm going to say right I want the head connected to the body and I want the upper arm connected to the body then I want the forearm connected to the upper arm and I want the hand connected to the forearm in other words wherever the body moves the head will move and then the upper arm will move and wherever the upper arm moves the forearm will move and wherever the forearm moves the hand will move however one thing we haven't done is set up our anchor points and it's important we think about where we want each of these layers to rotate so if I select the head layer I'm going to go to my pan behind tool keyboard shortcut Y and this is for the layer by the way I know these were created with shapes but we're going to do it using the layer position I'm going to take the pan behind tool and take the anchor point and move it to where the rotation would take place from so at the bottom of the neck and then for the body I would like it to rotate probably pretty much around the hip where we're going to put a leg which is going to be roughly about there and then the upper arm we're going to want that to rotate around the shoulder so put that about by the shoulder and then we want the forearm to rotate around the elbow and we want the hand to rotate around the wrist and now we've got what's called a forward kinematic chain in other words if I just go back to my selection tool and I was to select the body wherever the body goes everything else will now follow so wherever the body goes the head goes and the arm follows along and if I want to do any animation if I select those arm sections and hit R for rotation and I was to rotate the upper arm you'll see that the rest of the arm follows if I do the forearm the hand follows if I do the hand well nothing follows but we can actually individually set it up and that is forward because we're going down the chain we're going forward down the chain however if I was to select the hand and try and move that independently 
nothing else is going to come along for the ride. And that makes animation actually quite difficult. The quickest way of doing animation would be to move the hand and have a relationship going back down the line, inverse kinematics, such that wherever I move the hand, the forearm and the upper arm will also move as well. And that would be an inverse kinematic link. The forward kinematic is the way that we standardly do it down the line. Inverse kinematic is to say actually the hand is where we're going to do most of the controlling. Wherever the hand goes, the rest must follow. And when it comes to animating an item such as this, we're going to use some forward kinematics, say with the head and the body, but what we want to do is have the inverse kinematic link based down the arm. So how do we set this up? What we need to do is have controllers for the end of the link. So the end of our link in this case is the hand. So if I select the hand and I go over to do its little interface, which we've docked, you'll notice that there's a button called controller and if I click the word controller a null object is created and it's called C hand R so it's taken the same name as hand here and that's the controller but we haven't set the link up yet what we now need to do is define the chain okay hand to forearm forearm to upper arm and then link that all to the controller so hand holding the control or command key on a Mac forearm upper arm controller. Now we go to IK creation button and click and you'll see that it's changed one item we've now got one called hand goal which if I was to just very briefly show you those it's exactly the same as the hand at the end of the chain so for some reason it, it turns one of the layers off and creates a duplicate at the end but look what happens when I take the hand if I take this particular item start start moving it around you'll see that I've got a chain and you'll also notice that the arm is going in the right way and it's not bending backwards on itself and I've got this link if I want to rotate the hand I can hit W on my keyboard and then I can rotate the null object and V to get back to my tool and now I can just set keyframes for the controller to create the animation so let's just do a little bit of that. So let's go to the beginning of our timeline and hit P and R, P shift R to get position and rotation. Just click the stopwatches. So let's just say that's our start point. Go forward a couple of seconds and just say, I'll take that down and move it back and move it back. And then you've got, and then you've got your kinematic chain. And of course, if you want to then play with your handles to give it a bit more of a, a change in the motion path, you can actually play with the motion path. Okay, you can see how simple that is to actually create a standard inverse kinematic link. What we're going to do in the next tutorial is we're actually going to build up a whole body. So we're going to do the other arm, both legs, and we're going to set up all the various controllers, because there's going to be multiple controllers, to actually make this work. Mm -hmm.